Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Tundra Mission. We're on another mission today. We're going to put some door sill protection in the Toyota Tundra out here. What I've got are some products from Tough Skins, and by the way, there is a discount code. It's Rob Motive 10 for 10% off over at toughskins.com. Now, these are adhesive backed covers, if you will, for the door sill area, and they are very good quality, very easy to install. Now, you can get them in black, you can get them with mountains and other thing on, things on them, or you can get them with nothing on them at all. Mine are customized, of course. Now, let me show you, I'm sure you all know where they go, and that is in the door sill area, in the front and the back. This is a four-piece set. Now, to put them in, you have to go ahead and pop this factory piece off. It's pretty easy to do. I'll show you when we get to the rears here, we're going to do the same thing. And then once you get the door sill protectors installed, you go ahead and pop these right back on over the top of them. Pretty darn simple. Now, first off, we're going to clean the area with some rubbing alcohol just to get the best opportunity for adhesion. I'm going to switch to the hat cam. We're going to go ahead and get these installed. Like I said, you want to just go ahead and wipe off any uh, residue that's left on here so that we get the best adhesion. Pretty simple to do. Mine's not really very dirty anyway. You know, it's interesting in looking underneath the uh, existing panel, this panel up here that was there, you can see some, almost looks like primer or something. That does not come off. I don't know what that's about, but we're going to cover it anyway or put the cover back on, I should say, so you're never going to see it, but a ding to Toyota's uh, paint process, I guess. I don't think it should be that way, but hey, I don't paint Toyotas, so I don't know, maybe it should. You can see how dirty it is. Obviously, you want to get that as clean as possible, uh, or completely, I should say. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start with the top piece. That is the thinner or narrower piece. This piece with the two slots in it. And it has slots in it for a reason. That's because it's going to go around the two slotted areas where we're going to fit the uh, stock piece back on. So you want to make sure you get it just like that and then fold it down over the edge. I would recommend that you kind of peel back a little bit and then start right here and line it up as you go. Now, let's go ahead and get this peeled off a little bit. We'll see how my method works, I guess. About like that, I think. And then, like I said, you just want to line it up and I like this, it gives you kind of a guide. A lot of times there's no guides with this kind of stuff, but this gives you a guide to kind of go around, kind of like that. And then just loosely put it on. I wouldn't fully stick it on there just yet. Let's get to the back piece. Make sure we're lined up nicely there. I think we're going to be good. There's a little bit of flex in this, so uh, it's kind of hard to mess it up, really. And then we'll go ahead and stick the rest of it down. Again, just like that. Pretty easy. And then just go ahead and obviously put it down with your fingers or a rag or whatever. There is a little bit of uh, roughness to this, and that's good, uh, in case you need to have something to grab onto, although I never step up off the sides, I use the step. And then, what I usually do is kind of start on the edge and just push it down as you go, to kind of get it bending the way that you want it to be, right? Because you're going to curve over that edge. So just kind of run your thumb and finger across there like so. And obviously, you probably have your own method for doing something like this, but I prefer to do it this way. And then just inch a little further down as you go, just so that you don't have any air bubbles or wrinkles or anything like that. And then finally, just kind of go ahead and inch it on down all the way across, like so. Okay. 
and that's really about it. Now we'll move on to the second part and that is going to butt up right against the edge here against this piece uh, for the two-part uh, connection if you will. Okay this next part it's going to kind of tuck right under the edge here. There is uh, a rolling edge right here so you want to kind of you want to kind of tuck it right under the edge like so even with both edges and then just roll it down over the top pretty simple to do so at least we're gonna find out anyway I think it should be pretty simple to do what I might even try to do let's see if I can finagle this as soon as I get my edge what I might try to do is leave the covering on here if I can until I can roll it over the edge might be a futile proposition I don't know we're gonna find out kinda like so and then just kinda bend it back I think this is gonna work I don't know we'll find out normally I would just peel it all off and go gung-ho right but we're gonna try to be a little bit better on this one so let's see we're gonna stick it and that's why right there you see we're gonna kind of stick it on the edge what the best way is to do this I think kind of like this I'm trying to keep it taut and then push it up from underneath like that. I don't know how even I am. I hope I'm pretty even. And then just kind of stick it like that. And then I'm going to use a tool uh, because again there is a bit of a lip here. It kind of goes under. I just want to make sure it gets stuck uh, up underneath there. Both the top part and the bottom part for that matter. Just like that. And then make sure it's nice and stuck across the top. And now, I'm going to start to roll this down. This may actually work better than I had hoped. <laughs> just kind of roll it down like so. And then, I'm just going to do the same thing on the edge that I did on the top. Just kind of go across the edge. Look at that, you get a nice crisp edge that way. Because you don't want to stick it on the bottom and then stick it in the top, and then you're going to get a like a bubble or a void in between. You don't want that. So you get the idea. I'm going to continue doing the same thing on here then we'll come back on and put that top piece on and then we'll move to the back. I've got it all on there. It looks pretty darn good. Nice vibrant red color and before anybody asks, I know it says Rob Motive JT, right? I left that intentionally. I actually ordered it unintentionally before I changed the name of the channel but I thought that'd be kind of an homage to the Rob Motive JT uh, name that I had before with the Gladiator. Now, really, if you wanted to change it, it could be like just trucks. I don't know. But anyway, let's go ahead. We're going to put this back on. Pretty simple to do. You should just be able to kind of tuck it underneath. It does go up underneath this trim strip a little bit. So kind of tuck it underneath and give it a, a push. And then a little bit of a hit. And there you go. That's what the finished product looks like. And again, this is to keep you from scratching all of this paint right along this edge that's not protected. You can see that protects that from getting all scratched up. Well worth it, in my opinion. Now we're going to do the back side and I'll show you how easy it is to get this piece off. To get this piece off, you just want a kind of a low profile, narrow pry tool. Make sure you use plastic. And you can kind of feel where these little uh, connectors are. Right there is the first one. Just kind of want to pop it up a little like that. Go on down to the next one. Same thing. Same thing. You can see how easy they come out, right? Just like that. And then. Oops. 
and then just pull it out just like that there's all the connectors as far as installation goes it's the same we want to head go ahead and clean this off and then we'll stick the stickers uh, right on all right got it all done came out fantastically pretty simple mod let's take a look at it start out with the driver's side there you go again a nice popping uh, logo on there or name or whatever but it's the usefulness of it I guess the practicality of it that I like and that it's going to protect that area when I get in and out of the truck let's take a look at the passenger rear or driver's rear same thing that's what it looks like finished there's a tough skins uh, tailgate uh, insert letter by the way or letters you can get those over there too here's the rear passenger side you can see it came out really nicely and I like how it tucks underneath here uh, pretty cool and that we actually have that space to tuck it under so there's not going to be fraying edges or anything like that one more right up here in the front there you go pretty simple and pretty cool little mod again it does have a practical purpose to kind of protect that area from scratching I would wager that if you've had your truck for a year or two and you go out and take a look you've probably got some scratches in that area from people getting in and out and I will say if you do this is a good way to kind of refresh the truck a little bit and cover up those nasty scratches and protect them from getting any worse anyway leave a comment let me know what you guys think particularly if you've gotten these before uh, there is a discount code as i mentioned it's rob motive 10 over at toughskins.com check them out they have all kinds of other stuff not just for tundras but for tacomas and jeeps and many other brands thanks for watching stay safe out there bye